G'day Fools, I'm Scott Phillips, The Motley Fools Chief Investment Officer, and welcome to another video in our expanding, and yes, I keep saying it every week, but every week it's true, ever popular Motley Fool video series it's called Stocks in Focus. This is where we go and find the companies that are owned by you, the widest owned, most talked about, uh, often most uh, <laughs> significant movers on our ASX. I'm joined this week by Motley Fool Analyst, Portfolio Manager, all round good guy, Ryan Newman. How are you, buddy? Good, thank you, Scott. How are you? Mate, I'm very well, thank you. I will endeavour not to have my phone ring during this one this week. We'll see how I go. Um, <laughs> you made point, I think it's once or twice so far. I'm not sure. Hopefully only once. Mate, um, Stocks in Focus is our chance to talk about the companies that other people are talking about. We have our Stock of the Week series. That's where we focus on Motley Fool buy recommendations. And we do that every Wednesday, but every Friday here on YouTube, we talk about a company that frankly is in the news that people want to hear us talk about. Why not? You're a smart guy. I'm able to ask decent questions most of the time. So I figure that's a decent combination for a Laurel and Hardy show. Mate, we're going to talk about one of the companies that was once, you don't hear the WAX acronym very often anymore because we had a couple of uh, decent falls from grace around that group, but Altium, one of the kind of early uh, tech companies before buy now, pay later was all the rage. It was WAX and Altium, the printed circuit board software maker i'll let you tell me more about that in a minute it was one of those wax one of the three a's in the middle of wax it was a business that was taking australia to the world winning overseas doing some wonderful things then it kind of had a fall from grace it's been back there's lots going on it's a big company by the way and pretty widely owned one of those we hope can be an australian success story i should almost put a trademark after that it's one of those phrases that we like to use I'd like to think we can take our stuff to the rest of the world. Mate, firstly, I guess, give me a quick Cook's tour. Uh, no jargon, please. I'm not that bright. On what Altium is, what it does as a business. Yeah, so look, as you mentioned, it it, it is one of those wax stocks. You don't hear that too often anymore. But uh, <laughs> it, it really was part of that group that really did, uh, I guess, create a lot of excitement amongst in investors. And yeah. that sort of cooled off, I guess, more recently. Um, but look, at, at its heart, the, the Altium business is a software company. And what it does is it really helps engineers to design printed circuit boards. Uh, and printed circuit boards often goes by the acronym PCBs. Now, if you've ever looked in a DVD player, and look, let's be honest, most people, most people haven't, most people aren't that curious, but most people <laughs> probably are at least familiar with, I guess, what, what a printed circuit board looks like, maybe just not mm -hmm. exactly what it is. Generally, yeah. it's like a little... Uh, green or it's generally green sometimes can be blue uh, sort of chip or a card mm -hmm. and it's mm -hmm. got a whole lot of wires and what look like chips on it and basically basically that is what a PCB is now what that does is it essentially puts the smart in smart devices it really oh, like it. Instru instructs the device itself how to how to work how to function um, and it's I mean look let's be honest, the, the range of devices that PCBs are now going is just increasing mm -hmm. at a rapid clip. So, you know, it used to be in DVD players and TVs, as I mentioned, now it's in toasters and even bins, you know, bins are becoming smart bins. <laughs> oh, God help us. God you know, help what, us. All what, right. a, what a time to be alive, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. We can do anything. We're making computerized. That's right. That's right. <laughs> So look, I mean, this company, Altium, it has uh, a, a bunch of really uh, high profile customers. And among those are Audi, Tesla, BMW in the uh, automotive space. You've got SpaceX and NASA, which, you know, you don't get too many more impressive names than that. You've yeah, also sure. got local local uh, businesses like ResMed and Cochlear, which most mm -hmm. uh, investors are familiar with on the ASX. And also tech giants like Amazon and Apple and even Google owned by uh, Alphabet. So look, it, its range of customers is exemplary. Um, and, and that's a really good sign for a business. Um, oh, so instead of making the circuit boards by hand, by kind of going out there having someone soldering bits onto bits of silicon wafer, which is in the old, make, but I, I'm, I'm old enough to remember CPUs and motherboards and my computer education kind of stopped there in about 1973 or something. Um, but if we kind of move it to, from then to now, this is the computerization of the process itself, right? If you're gonna if you're gonna make a computerized device, you want a powerful chip as you can get in the smallest possible space, created at the cheapest possible cost. And generally speaking, the whole idea of so circuit board is what it is, and it's printed as a as a production technology. And again, you tell me if I'm wrong. I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to summarize what I think I know. Um, and so the process of doing that, they don't do the manufacture, but they help engineers basically kind of in my head and again tell me i'm wrong 
Um, the, the old computer-aided design, right? The idea of an architect building a house using a computer. Uh, or you see those diagrams every now and again, you see some, some fancy computer guy spinning around a 3D model on a screen and showing you a, a car or a something. It is, it, in my head, it's always been that, but for computer chips, where they've said, okay, when it goes through the machine, put the solder here, the wire here, the printing here, whatever it needs to do, so it spits out the other end as a complete done circuit board, computerized you know, computer component. Is that kind of roughly right? How, how badly wrong am I? Yeah, no, that, look, that, that is exactly right. So it's, it's really what you call electronic computer-aided design or ECAD. Oh, there and you go. Look, okay. I mean, the, these cards, these chips or the, the PCBs themselves, they're very, they, they're becoming increasingly small, but also increasingly complex, you know, stuff that you right. can't do by hand. So yeah. the, they, are, they are designed by computer oh, and that is course. exactly right, what okay. Pentium does. So, so it's not about it, cost necessarily. It's about just literally making sure you can physically do the thing that wouldn't be possible with these pudgy digits. Well, yeah, and cost as well. I mean, it's right, it's right, a very right. it's a very intricate process. But but essentially, what LTM does is it provides the software to those engineers and to those businesses that allows them to actually design these PCBs. Okay. Um, now, I mean, interestingly, this company is the company's software is used by over thirty thousand companies around the world, wow. and it. It operates, so its main product is uh, Altium Designer, and it really operates predominantly on a subscription model, but also perpetual license. So basically what that means is it sells uh, licenses up front, so customers can basically buy uh, ongoing perpetual access to it, or they can subscribe to the solution, which basically provides them with ongoing updates. It provides them with the, you know, the latest technology and the latest features. Um, and Altium Designer is really targeted at the mainstream market. Uh, so we're talking about the mainstream en engineers. They do also offer a uh, higher end solution, which is called Nexus. And basically that helps to make smarter decisions during the layout and uh, the layout of the design. So uh, okay. accelerating a product's time to market, eliminating costly reworks, uh, and also allowing for greater, greater collaboration between teams. So maybe, you know, allowing for collaboration between the, the designer of the, the PCB themselves, as well as the end mm -hmm. solution. Um, this company also has made a number of successful acquisitions over its time. And one of its more successful uh, acquisitions is a company called Octopart, which uh, actually forms quite a major part of the business now. And basically what it is, is it's, it's an electronic design component search engine. So it manages information on more than 40 million PCB parts, uh, which can basically be found in products ranging from electric boards for smartphones to headphones to toasters to televisions, as I said. And um, as, I, as I said, this is a company the business acquired a few years ago, and it's it's actually operating on a run rate of around twenty two million dollars uh, US dollars that is per year. So it's quite a major acquisition now. Must mate, that's what the business does. And if you as I told our viewers, you're smart. You've done a wonderful job of explaining exactly what's going on with the company. You also mentioned that things have come off the boil a little bit. Now it's really important for us as long term investors, and here at the Motley Fool, to separate out the stock from the business, right? There are so many people who'll say, oh, I'm really disappointed in Cochlear. So why is that? Oh, the share price is down. So, well, dude, that's not the company, that's the stock, right? that's the share price. And yes, to some, sometimes they're the same thing. Sometimes they're completely different things. Um, fair to say over the last 18 months, Afterbay hasn't gone from a $40 stock to an $8 stock to $120 stock because the business went from being worth you know, or, or having revenue or profits that it moved in those sort of gyrations. It was largely just the market's perception that moved. When it comes to Altium, mate, has it been a share price story, a business story, or both? Look, it's been a bit of both. It's it's been a roller coaster ride for for Altium <laughs> investors over the past couple of years, really. So it it did. I mean, when it was part of that wax phenomenon, mm. it, it really did go from a very low point to a very high point, and then came back down. The reason right. for that was the company itself was delivering very strong results, consistent results, uh, and actually, I guess, exceeding their own guidance oftentimes. Mm. Uh, more recently, that actually started to fray a little bit and the company did start to, to miss some targets, you know, a, a little bit more disappointing than what the market was, was hoping for. So the stock did then, uh, it, it basically collapsed, I, I, I guess is a, a reasonable word to describe what was happening. In terms of whether this was a stock story or a, or a, a business story in terms of the mm -hmm. turnaround, I would say a little bit of both, but probably more so okay. a stock story. So. In this case, okay. if you bought when it was low, uh, I think you've probably benefited from a bit of luck. And the reason for that is because a company called Autodesk came along. 
Now, mm. Autodesk is a it's a it's a giant. Uh, it's about sixty two billion dollars or thereabouts. I think it might be even worth a little bit more than that. And basically, Autodesk is an American multinational software corporation. Uh, it, it makes software products and services for architecture, uh, engineering, construction, manufacturing, quite a few different industries. Uh, I should mention as well, I'm, I'm actually a shareholder in Autodesk. Uh, Autodesk, though, in, in June 2021, actually came along and made an offer to LTM to acquire mm-hmm. the business outright. Um, so it was it was really a strategic play for Altium because Altium is quite a high, high it would have been quite a highly complementary business uh, for Autodesk, and Autodesk offered about thirty eight dollars fifty per share for Altium, which was a significant premium compared to what uh, what what the shares had been trading at previously. Mm-hmm. Um, now apparently this takeover offer uh, evolved from uh, quote unquote dialogue from about a strategic partnership. So okay. it had been on discussions had been ongoing for quite some time, uh, but Altium actually rejected the offer uh, mm. w- without actually consulting with with investors. It, it rejected the offer pretty much outright and said that the proposal significantly undervalues Altium and its forward prospects. Now, the way that this was actually written, the, the, the way that this response was written, it, it really seemed like Altium was essentially fishing for higher bids. It said that it had uh, been approached over times by uh, by other competitors. It also said that, you know, it would remain in discussions with these sort of businesses. So I think a lot of investors sort of, and myself uh, as well, sort of had in mind that what they were really going for was just a slightly higher uh, offer price and that they would take it. Right. Now that didn't actually happen. Um, a couple of weeks later, Altium then came out with another another announcement and said uh, that it, it was responding to media speculation that it had uh, received a second offer from Autodesk. And it said, no, that wasn't true. Uh, there are actually conflicting reports out there. Um, Altium said one thing, Autodesk actually said another. So Autodesk said that it did approach uh, a secondary offer at $40 per share. Uh, when it was rejected, it basically decided to walk away from the negotiation. So um, look, Altium's share price has, I guess, remained somewhat stable uh, in, in the fallout of that. They're still trading at around $35, $36. Uh, maybe there's some expectation that um, that, a, that a, a takeover could still proceed. Maybe, uh, maybe it is the market's confidence, if you will, in management's uh, management's emphatic response that we're worth more than that. <laughs> that they think that yeah. there's some sort of flaw under this share price. Uh, but yeah, that's that's the that, that's the I guess the reason that Altium has been in the in the news so much recently. Nice mate. It's a it's a gutsy board who says no outright. Right? There's one thing to shop around and say, oh look, no. But if you come back with more, we'll we'll do a deal. Uh, and you said maybe it depends who you believe as to what deal was offered and how serious the deal was and what conditions they were. As always these days, the lawyers have a field a field day. Uh, was it the um, incomplete, unsolicited? Uh, you know, <laughs> there, there, there's a million words they put. There's a few, there's a few buzzwords coaches. in there, yeah. Right, just just to basically say, look, well, we're kind of maybe basically interested, but don't hold us to it. It's kind of the way that takeovers are phrased these days, and then that starts the takeover dance. Um, I, I agree. I was actually surprised that Altium did. It, it was a pretty robust no, wasn't it? It wasn't even kind of a, no, oh, look, not quite enough or whatever it was. It seemed to me at least to be a pretty direct view. And certainly management, it's a gutsy call when you push its, uh, a potential suitor away and then you've got to look at shareholders every every couple of weeks or months and say, yeah, we know we could have got more in the share still below this share price. So gutsy call either way. I mean, let's, let's move away now from Altium, the company alone, and let's put the share price story into the mix. Um, at the, With the serious stocks in focus, we look at, the pros and the cons of an investment. And then I will ask you at the very, very end to uh, to share with us your expectation, whether you think this will be an outperformer or an underperformer over the long term. Let's start with the pros, mate. So you've got, done a great job of explaining the company. You talked a little bit about the share price in the context of the takeover and the, the wax phenomenon. Uh, just kind of give us some of the, 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 the case for the investment. Put your bull hat on, as I say, but say regularly. Give us the bull case for an investment in Altium today. Look, I think uh, for the most part, management has done quite a good job of managing Altium. Uh, as I said, it did have a, a really strong run of performances for quite some time. That was before COVID. Uh, COVID did sort of interrupt things a little bit uh, with some poor results more recently. Um, I guess we're sort of getting into bear territory there, but bear with me. <laughs> um, I think in that sense, the the takeover offer from after, from uh, Autodesk, rather not Afterpay, from Autodesk may have... <laughs> I guess been a little bit opportunistic in that sense. I think they probably mm. smelled a little bit of blood in the water and recognized, right. hey, we can we can actually get on top of this, you know, maybe get ourselves a bargain. 
Um, I think that's part of part of the, the reasoning there. Right. Look, the fact is management does have very strong, strong and they have, as I said, they have done quite a good job of executing against that recently or, or in recent years at, at very least. Mm-hmm. Um, strong ambitions include growth in China. Uh, China has been a really strong performer for the business pre-COVID, and I think that can continue to to happen uh, over the next couple of years as well. Basically, what happened there is they found that a lot of users were, were basically using a pirated version of the software. They went in hardball and basically converted a lot of them to, to paying users. And that was a really lucrative, uh, I guess, new income stream essentially for them. Mm-hmm. Um, and if they can continue to do that over time, I think that can be a real winner. Um, look, the company itself, though, it, it's about it's guiding for $190 million. Uh, that's US dollar, US uh, dollar revenue over uh, the 2021 financial year. They're actually targeting $500 million by 2025. Um, wow. So that, that that will require quite a strong, uh, quite mm. a strong um, compounded annual growth rate, about 27% mm. per annum between now and 2025. So it is quite a strong growth that they're projecting. And, and look, in management's defense, I think that is part of the reason that they have rejected that offer, that if they can actually right. achieve that rate of growth, then they do think that they're worth more. Uh, the company is also a really scalable sort of business. Um, earnings margin uh, to be around 37% this year. I think that has the potential to go higher over time as they do continue to build that top line and I, I guess grow their expenses at a lower pace or a slower pace. Mm. Those margins can continue to expand over time. It's also a really sticky product. And what I mean by that is once a customer actually starts using LTM software, it's pretty hard to switch. Part of the reason for that is because it does become so ingrained in the company's workflows. The other reason as well is that uh, once once a, a user has, has learned how to use LTM software, it can be quite difficult to actually retrain them to use something else, uh, as well as, I guess, uploading the, the designs to a, new, uh, to a new software platform or software pl- uh, product. Mm-hmm. Uh, that process, itse- process itself could take between six and 12 months. So a lot of disruption if they do choose to, to make the switch. So in that sense, going with a, with a really strong uh, brand like Altium, is uh, quite a strong move. Um, yeah, so I, I do think that it is a, a, a good business. It has had some, I guess, more questionable results more recently around COVID, but uh, all in all, a, a very strong business. Very nice. Thank you, mate. So a, a good Australian business going places probably fast, maybe faster than the manager would expect it to. And as you say, uh, if you can get anywhere close to those compound numbers, then Management would have been right, I suppose, to knock back this deal. If you imagine Afterpay being taken over at $10 or Woolies at $4 or t- take your pick, um, you know, the, the companies that do go on to much, much greater, Amazon at 100 bucks, I own shares in Amazon. Um, the, the, you know, it, it, there's a, it's, it's very easy to look back and say, man, I'm glad some of those companies weren't taken out for those sort of prices. On the flip side, uh, plenty, of, plenty of examples too of companies that were taken over uh, at too high a price. So, so it's not necessarily one or the other. Speaking of, Let's go to the bear case, mate. Uh, take take your bull hat off, put on your your scowly bear mask, and uh, give us the case for avoiding an investment altium. What could go wrong? Why would you not want to buy the shares? Look, going back to that, uh, the failed takeover attempt by Autodesk. I I do think it was quite bullish of management to say, or quite aggressive rather, of management to say mm-hmm. no. I, I think that their guidance and their expectations for the future are quite ambitious. Uh, so the, to give a bit of context, this company, Altium, is uh, about a $4.6 billion market cap. So if we assume that their revenue uh, guidance is achieved, $190 million US dollars, we'll say that's about $250 million Australian dollars, mm-hmm. that puts the company on a 20, uh, an, 18 reven- an 18 times revenue multiple. It's not right. cheap. Um, likewise, about 49 times uh, operating earnings or EBITDA uh, in, in financial jargon. So... They, look, these aren't cheap multiples by any traditional mm. sense. And, and look, if they do achieve significant growth like they're, like they're uh, forecasting and like they're expecting, then you know maybe that is justifiable. But I think you sort of need to go back a little bit as well and, and look at their more recent results through COVID. Uh, so the, the $190 million target that they've set for this year, that's actually at the low end of their guidance range. Um, ideally, you'd like to see a company coming in at the higher end of their guidance range or um, mm-hmm. at, at sort of very least, you know, the sort of mid, mid-range. So the company hasn't been firing on all, all cylinders. So I again, I do think it was a little bit ambitious that the company would say, 
you are significantly undervaluing us. Uh, I think that was probably too ambitious in my mind. And they really needed to show, I guess, their their real colours and their real uh, potential more recently to, to back that. So uh, I think by paying a price that was rejected at, I guess, close to what the takeover offer was, was uh, offered at, so it's mm. trading at about $36 per share, I think, at the minute, it is, a, it is a high price to pay. Um, so ambitious growth targets. Look, I, I also wasn't a big fan of the company's um, communications over the takeover offer. As I said a minute ago, there was conflicting reports where Altium said it hadn't received a second offer. Autodesk said it had made a second offer. I, I personally think for, a, for a, I guess, a situation like that, I would have ideally liked to have seen management approach investors and say, Hey, we've received this. What do you think? Rather than basically flat out saying no twice. Um, so that's probably my bear case that, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit questionable of management's um, judgment on that one uh, and whether or not, I mean, there's such a thing as empire building, I suppose. I'm not saying that that's yeah. what they're doing, but yeah, yeah. there is a risk of that, um, I, at least in my opinion. So yeah, that, that's probably the bear case for me. I like it, man. It's super hard to tell, isn't it? I have to say, I, I agree with you in terms of, Having that bid put to shareholders, I, I I use the example before. If I if I owned a cafe and I happened to be away that day, and someone came into the barista and said, "Mate, I'll, I'll tell you, boss, I'll give you a quarter million dollars for the cafe," and then it comes out later, the, the barista, no, I, I didn't bother telling you because you know you weren't here. I thought it was too too you know, too cheap anyway. So, I'll, dude, mm-hmm. it's not your business; it's my business. I, I'm the shareholder. I own the business. <laughs> you know, you might be a great exactly. barista, you might be a good cafe manager, and I love that you're doing that. But if I want to sell a business, it's kind of my call, right? Not yours. Um, so yeah, I, yeah. I do. I, I would expect um, ASX companies to put those things to shareholders, at least to, to test out and, and make a case, but let the shareholders decide whether they want to buy or sell. On the flip side, plenty of people save from um, from themselves by some of those things in the past as well. All right, let's 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 uh, wrap this up, mate, with what everyone's been waiting for. We've made them wait to the end because that's what we do. Um, if you look at Altium, if you look at the current share price, if you look at the current multiple and the long-term potential for this company, the, the business success it's had thus far, if you look out three to five years, does Altium, in your view, outperform or underperform the ASX 200? Look, I, coming into this talk, I, I was a little bit on the fence, but recognizing that I have to give an answer, I will say <laughs> Thank underperform. You. Uh, oh, okay. So I'm probably le- leaning, leaning that way, underperform. Right. I, I think, I, I feel personally that the company would have been better off taking that offer. Uh, I, mm-hmm. I do think it would have been a, a stronger performer under the Autodesk banner. Um, right. and I think as well, just recognizing the, the more recent performances, as I said, I would have liked to have seen a little bit more fire, a little bit more rebound by now, uh, from the company. So just based on that, I, I think that the, the share price as it is now is probably a little bit ambitious. Um, and I suppose a, another way to look at it as well is it, does the, does the, I guess the upside, does that outweigh the downside? And for me, it doesn't. Mm-hmm. So if we're looking at a 10, 15% upside, but we're also looking at a, you know, 20, 30% downside potential, yeah. then, yeah. you know, which way do you want to go? Uh, I, I think thinking about it in, in that respect, I would say underperform. Beautiful. Thank you very much. There you go, Phil. You've heard it from Rhino himself. He's given you a wonderful summary of the business, what it does, how you should think about it, how to think about the bear and the bull case. Feel free to make a different decision if you so choose, but Rhino has put his incredible... Uh, experience and intellect to the grindstone and that's the outcome that we've come up with thank you for watching our motley full stocks in focus series we'll be back next week with another one while you're here though make sure you do like and subscribe to the motley full australia's youtube channel because not only this series we've now got our stock of the week series we've got our my favorite investment books series that rhino's due for relatively soon stay tuned for that one as well plus the rest of the motley full team we are putting a heap of stuff up on our youtube channel it's all free it's all for you um, I reckon you could do very, very bad, or much worse, I should say, than uh, than subscribing to the channel. Speaking of which, uh, speaking of subscribing to things, Ryan is on Twitter. You are at TMF Newmy, N-E-W-M-Y. Am I correct, mate? That is correct, yes. There you go. Follow Ryan on Twitter. He's a smart guy. You'll, you'll really benefit from that. You can also follow me on Twitter and The Motley Fool. Let me give you my Twitter and Instagram handles. They're the same thing, at TMF Scott B., you can follow The Motley Fool on Twitter and Insta at The Motley Fool AU. If you're on Facebook, jump on The Motley Fool's Facebook account, The Motley Fool Australia, pretty straightforward. Or you can follow me on Facebook. I'm just simply slash Scott Phillips Money. Don't forget to check out our podcast, Motley Fool Money. 
more on that in a little bit. Thanks for watching, fools. And until next time, fool on.